Tyler in Pinehurst, North Carolina, the golf capital of North Carolina. See more better with FreePrescriptionLenses.com, the free prescription capital of North Carolina. <laughs> uh, best optical shop in this medical complex that I'm in. Anyway, so tonight I am going to cut your prescription Crizal Sapphire 360 UV lenses for your Oliver Peoples Vintage. This is, let me take everything out of the original packaging that you have mailed to me. I am not an Oliver Peoples dealer, so he has mailed me this frame. A very nice frame at that. Oliver Peoples makes some really nice stuff. This is the 5183, the O'Malley in color 1003, and the 50, 47 eye size. Not 57, the 47 eye size. Great classic styling. It has the keyhole bridge. These are made in Italy, Oliver Peoples, great, great collection. So let me begin. I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses of this frame. It is the classic P3 styling. It has one, two, three, is that a seven barrel hinge? Very well made, fine Italian craftsmanship. You're going to get some fine French Essilor lenses. Hopefully your frame and lens won't be fighting. I'm tracing it on my Essilor blocker. I'm going to put it in here. Put it into uh, program this shape into the computer. You are Secret Agent 1566. So years from now, if you need new lenses or you want to turn these into sunglasses, because this would be a really nice pair of sunglasses. But years from now, should you ever need new lenses, I'll have this programmed into my computer. You will not have to mail me this frame again. And I can mail just the lenses to your home. Then you can pop them in yourself. So a little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic, any frame from me and I'll include free prescription, free, clear, single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number. So if you have unused vision insurance or health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Let's move on to the next screen. I'm going to enter your pupillary distance, which is 27 for the right eye. The computer starts at 32.5, so I'm going to tap the minus button until we get down to 27. I do want to raise the optical center up to 24. Let's make that 24 because you don't look through the center of the lens. This blue cross is the geometric center of the frame. But your eye is just above that and inset inward. So let's come down here to the lensometer. Minus a quarter, minus 50 at 100. Minus a quarter, minus 50 at 100. We're going to start by always dialing the axis. Put the, let's put the power drum on zero. Make sure everything's perfect. And that's at minus a quarter. And you know what? Let's go ahead and put some ink in here. It's been a long day, so I know it probably needs some more ink. Inky, inky, inky. All right. Set that down. Raise this back up. Now I can take the lens out of the protective sleeve. It comes with a little laminate on the front of the lens to protect the front surface of the lens so nothing rubs on it during shipping. That is no longer needed. I'm going to put that there. We're at minus a quarter, minus a quarter, minus 50 at 100. Put the lens in, rotate it until the spherical component of the prescription comes into view first. Check your astigmatism correction. I'll explain all that a little bit. I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. And I'm going to mark this one R for right. Now, speaking of which, I always highlight this. So you know that you're getting the original Essilor brand of Crizal Sapphire 360 UV. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to turn the pen around so it writes better. And of course, I'm highlighting the prescription of the right lens. There's two ways to write everything, a plus cylinder and a minus. Years ago, they used to put the astigmatism correction on the front of the lens. And that's when it was known as plus cylinder. When it's on the back surface of the lens, it is now minus. Plus, minus. With me, without me. With me, without me. Are we, are we clear? And let me uh, mark this one. Aura. <laughs> Sorry, I still know people who say that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't joke. The left lens is now minus 75, minus a quarter at 75, minus 75, minus a quarter at 75. Put the power drum on minus 75. 
take the lens out of his protective sleeve, take the laminate off the front, put it in, rotate the lens until the spherical part of the prescription comes in first, the minus 75, we're going to check the minus a quarter, we end up at minus one, so that is perfect, we're going to put three dots on these lenses, and we're going to label this one L, I always like to put it on the inside, so it'll be cut off at the nose, and of course, this is the left eye. And I always like to highlight that and then write in red for the for the lens. And if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a video of all my bad jokes. That's what I'm gonna do one day. So I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. This is a block, also known as Jenny from the block. So I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers. Look, what's the odds of that? I've got two right here, and they're just jumping and excited, ready to go. So peel the paper away to make the black side sticky and line this up on the first. Put that on the platform. Let's do the same thing now for the second block. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back, a uh, silver button is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice the first time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet here in the arm. One of these things is a right lens. There we go. Put that on there. And the reason I put those dots on there, it tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly. If you had a spherical prescription, meaning you had no astigmatism correction, it literally, if this were an old John Lennon frame, a metal frame that had a screw to hold in the eye wire if that came loose and the lens rotated you would see just the same for the most part your pd might be off a little bit but once if you have any astigmatism if this were to rotate you're not going to see as clearly so that's why i have the three dots on there make sure the lens is large enough and it is hit that button the arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens we're now going to do the same thing for the lens that ain't right which tonight will be played by the left lens peel the paper away line up the magnet your pupillary distance for your left eye is 30. So we're going to hit the plus button until we get to 30. Get everything lined up here. Man, those black dots are nice and perfect. That's what I'm talking about. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. Now, this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home and you will need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to cut them for you. But let me recap. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop. So, let's wake up the computer. Wakey, wakey. Job number 1566. 1566. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex material, I would select that, but we're going to stay on polycarb. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens. I wish I could just override that, but I can't, so I have to hit it on every time. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens. Convex. I'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. Ding! Turn the page. No, so now the magnet's going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck. Or by now, you know I like to call it the Charles because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. So the actual cutting wheel is this diamond-crusted wheel on the left. It's going to grind away your lens material from this size down to this size. This wheel in the center, that little valley, that channel, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So let me go ahead and hit the green arrow, which is start. The door closes, the clamp shuts, making a terrible sound because it's dry. It won't make that much noise on the second one. And now it's going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And it is. And now the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which you won't have any in this frame with your prescription. But it is a routine procedure and becomes a little bit more critical because I do cut very strong prescriptions all day long for how much? For free. And it becomes a little bit more critical then. Now the light you see flickering in the background is water. That's there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off of the cutting wheel. Now polycarbonate lenses cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Whereas plastic, high-index, plastic, and Tribex lenses have water spraying on them the entire time. But as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. 
Essilor calls polycarbonate airwear. They feel that it's light as air. These lenses are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses, the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and from flying debris. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so this is permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in Pinehurst, North Carolina, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now again, this is the Essilor brand of Crizal Sapphire. Now, the Crizal anti-glare coating is three features in one. The first feature is it reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights and such. So now it's getting the V-shaped bevel. It's on the middle wheel, the bevel wheel. The second feature is it goes by the initials ARC, which stands for anti-reflection coating. So it reduces reflection. So if someone's looking at you, they're not looking at a reflection in your glasses. And so it makes for much better eye contact. Plus, one of the reasons millennials like to get it is that you're less likely to see a flash from the camera or, or the reflection of the phone if you're taking a selfie. Now, the third feature that I like, which is the practical side. The machine that applies the Crizal Sapphire anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It takes over eight it takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. Your lens has to be dried and cleaned, washed in an acid bath, dried and cleaned in between each of the eight coatings. So because of the time and the expense, they Crizal puts the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. If you guys noticed, I opened that door with my mind. You know, I don't want to brag or anything, but I can do stuff like that. I can also melt ice with my mind. Say it with me. I'll just have to stare at it for a long time, but then I can do it. I can melt. Gosh, come on. Y'all don't believe me? Run my thumbnail around to get all the optical sawdust off of your lens. Let's see if it fits first time around. I'm going to take the frame. Now, years from now, Tyler, if you ever need new lenses, you tuck the lens in at the outside corner. I actually tuck it in a little bit at the bottom, and I go around. And I work with it until it wants to pop in, and it don't want to pop in. So I'm going to take this down 1 15th of a millimeter, exactly halfway between 1 10th and 1 20th of a millimeter. I'm going to hit retouch. I may have to do more, but I do not want to force the lens into the frame. A lot of people would use heat, this hair dryer, or sand, those little glass beads or sand you see inside of a little crock pot at an optical shop. What that does, it makes the plastic more pliable. And if I was in a hurry and I didn't care about the work that I did, now I shouldn't say that. There are people who use it for legitimate reasons. I use it to adjust temples. Or if, if someone sends me a frame that's warped, I use that to get it back, but I never use it to mount a lens. I do what's known as the cold mount. <laughs> I just love the way that sounds, the cold mount. You know, like when you've been married a long time and you gotta cut glasses and you're working late, it's. 7:43, Tuesday, April 23rd, 84 degrees in my hometown, and here I am at work. My wife's at home wondering what time. That's right, what time I'm going to get home. And uh, I say, honey, I'm tired. I did the cold mount at work, <laughs> but uh, but I don't want to use heat because it would go in there, but it would cause the frame to stretch a little bit over time. That would make the frame roll outwards, give you an ugly cosmetic look, as well as shortening the lifespan of the frame. So you want a perfectionist like me cutting your lenses. The right lens takes a little bit longer. Once we get the size just right, we flip it over and cut the left. So we're gonna tuck it in. Yeah, that's the quick cold snap that I was looking for. Flip that over to L, put that in and hit start. Just like before the door closes, the clamp shuts. A little quieter this time. It's a rubber gasket that stops water from going inside the, the mechanical and electronic part of the edger. And you can see as it was tracing that shape. But that's why when it's dry it makes a sound after it's cut one lens it's a lot quieter going through the gasket. But yeah, so you have no edge thickness whatsoever in this frame. So, pop that off, pull the sticker off, use my hand approved drying method, use my shirt approved drying method throw that on there 
add that to my sticker collection. We're going to come down here to the lensometer and look at that. I've got where did I do with my Kleenex? I keep moving around. I got to find it. But my my PD came off, so I'm going to put another one on there. We're going to spin the axis wheel back to 100. Put it in. We're going to find the optical center of the lens. Put the dots back on there, and I'm actually reading minus a quarter, one tick mark away from zero, going towards the red one. That's because the unit of measurement used in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, starting at a quarter and going up from there. In either direction, it could be plus 25, but yours is minus 25. You have one step. You are nearsighted, so you have one step of farsighted correction. With your glasses off, everything is much too large. So you only need one step of correction for your right eye, but once everything's the right size, you have two steps of astigmatism correction. Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So once everything is the correct size, we take away the fuzzy edges. So you have one curve on your eye this way, the minus a quarter. You have another two steps, which is a steeper curve going this way, and it's how we line those two curves up to make everything nice and crisp. And we line it up at the 100th meridian. A straight line is 0 to 90 to 180, so we're going to go just past the 90th meridian to about 100. Now your left eye, oh, well let's go ahead and check that. Let's check that second power. And I'm getting minus 75, one tick mark away from 1 this time, going away from 0. How did I get there? Remember high school algebra where you add two like signs together? Yeah, don't worry, I've forgotten that too. Let's use today's terms. Someone borrowed 25 cents from you and then they borrowed another 50 cents. They would owe you 75 cents total. That's where we're at, 75 cents in the red. Now your left eye, which I tried to allude to earlier, you need three steps of farsighted correction, but only one step of astigmatism correction, and we're gonna turn that to a fine tune knob of 75, the axis wheel. That's the axis wheel. Now, this last number could be anywhere from zero to 180. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with this could be a random number anywhere actually from 1 to 180 because 0 and 180 are the same number remember 0 180 come on we talked about that don't you remember all right so now I'm gonna open the door with my mind again take the lens out I'm a mind opener I'm actually a light bender so that's what I do with your glasses off especially people with astigmatism Normally, the light comes in through your iris and your pupil and focuses on the back of your retina now that your pupil is facing this way. But the light comes in and instead of focusing on a point focus on your macula, it scatters all over the back of your retina. That's why when you look at street lights or stop lights at night, you get a halo effect or little spikes coming out in every direction. That's what a uncorrected astigmatism does. I bend the light that comes in from every direction all the points of the compass comes in and I bend it and make it focus right on your macula make everything nice and crisp so that's my superpower I bend light for a living what what do you do everyone out there watching this video what's your superpower so we're gonna tuck it in at the outside corner push down at the nose which is the thickest part of the frame that's why I always apply force there because because that's what I do I bend light and I push with my thumbs there we're gonna take this block off we're going to use my calf approved drawing method. <laughs> throw that in there. Never seen that in my videos. You didn't see that one coming. We're going to turn the fine tune knob to 75. Put it in over that smudged black dot. We'll put a new one there because we can. Read the power. Look, I didn't even have to move it. I'm still on minus 75. Left over from when I combined these two numbers, minus 75. Let's check for your one diopter of astigmatism correction. And we're at minus one. How about that? Man, I tell you what, this kid with the two thumbs is good. We're going, oh, I was supposed to put another dot on there. See, look, I was sitting there patting myself on the back and I already forgot what I was doing. Okay, so your pupillary distance 27 for the right eye, 30 for the left for a combined 57. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. Take the PD stick. Look, a blue PD stick. I left my red one at home. Take the blue PD stick, and when we hold it up to the left lens, I know there's some mudges, smudges, but look at that little singular black dot. But when we hold it up, we're getting 57 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. Let's check the optical center height of 24. Turn the card around, and when we look at the center of the bottom of the frame, we're getting 24. 
Man, that kid is good. Now can I brag on myself? So, this is the portion in your video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned to everyone that this purchase is tax free. Not because it's on the internet. There's a lot of people, and anything you buy on Amazon now, they're charging you tax. But, I'm in North Carolina. The state of North Carolina does not charge tax on medical devices. You may be shocked to find this out, but eyeglasses are medical devices. So, they remain tax free. So, your lens, if you had bought the frame for me, you get free lenses. I'm sorry I couldn't do that for free since I'm not an Oliver Peoples dealer. So I charge $49.99 for single vision lenses. The Crizal Sapphire adds $139.99 for a total of $189.98. And I used to have, there it is, it's buried. $189.98 times 8% sales tax in North Carolina is, <laughs> that can't be right, hang on. 189.98 times 8%. That's what I should have done. So you saved $15.19 worth of tax money from buying the glasses from me in North Carolina. Now you saved even more because anyone else in Pinehurst would have charged you an arm and a leg for these lenses. Nothing comes cheap in Pinehurst. That is a high dollar, high rent district. That's where they have the U.S. Open every five years. Tiger just won at the the Masters at Augusta, but they have the U.S. Open at uh, Pinehurst number two, the course. I forget how many courses they have overall, but uh, anyway, back to work. So, let's get these in, but oh yeah, okay, blah, 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 blah. When you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And when I say wobble, when I take mine off and I press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me because I have one ear higher than the other. Or do I have one ear lower than the other? I can never remember. Someone do some math and figure that out. So... I also have one hand which is longer than, is it this one or this one? I can't remember. One hand is longer than the other. Y'all figure that one out too. Alright, so I'm going to flip this over, press down, there is no wobble. Hello, is this on? Come on, this is as funny as I get. You guys need to laugh at this stuff. So, close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, and I've got nothing to worry about. I'm going to clean these a little bit more around the edges because Crizal Sapphire is such a hydrophobic coating, meaning that water, rain, other things will bead right off. So they put a powdery coating on the lens, and you guys don't want to see me thoroughly clean this, but I will afterwards. But that's why there's a little bit of residual powder around the edges, but I'm going to clean these before shipping. But I also send out a selfie request to have everyone's picture on the website. Tyler, I would love to have your picture of rocking these things. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only on how to care for your frame and lenses so they'll last you for years, but for your cleaning cloth that I provide your Oliver Peoples one and how to care for your case so those two will last you for years. But that is it. Thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen and if you don't like what you've seen and you're hoping to see a better one, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. On Twitter as freerxlenses. Y'all follow me on Instagram. I'm going to start putting some specials on there, some codes where things will be on sale. i got to talk to my uh, website designer about that, but I'm going to start doing that on Instagram. He wants me to see how many people are following me on social media. And uh, Facebook charges too much, so I'm going to do it on Instagram. But uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the Contact Me button on the website. That's what Tyler did to find out if I could cut lenses for a frame that he mailed to me, which he did. So... That's it. Again, Tyler in Pinehurst, North Carolina. Thank you for the purchase of the Crizal Sapphire 360 lenses for your Oliver Peoples 5183, the O'Malley in color 1003 in the 47 eye size. And everyone else has got a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.